welcome to another episode of Strategic Minds Making Money Moves, where we take strategies and put them in place so we can get that green. I'm so excited today, I have to tell you. It is really, really interesting to have um, guests come back after you have seen them before and see their growth and their maturity and the things that they've done, it is so gratifying. And today we have an awesome episode. Today we have Dr. Tashana Thompson and she is from Beyond Business Solutions and it's a marketing agency. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what she's doing and where she's going and the successes that she's made. Looking forward to this conversation. Well, hello. Welcome. Well, hey there, beautiful. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm glad to have you. I'm glad to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. So why don't you share with our audience that may not have seen the previous episode sure. a little bit about your business? Sure. So my company is Beyond Business Solutions. We are a almost 15-year-old marketing agency, and we provide holistic marketing support to solopreneurs, small businesses, mostly women-led because we know women are ruling the world, right? <laughs> and we help them do all the things that they don't have time to do in their businesses or they don't understand how to do. So we really focus on marketing strategy and providing support for email marketing, social media management, um, content creation, all those fun things that really fuel our businesses that most entrepreneurs don't have time to focus on. Well, um, so talk to us a little bit about the strategies that you had on the last sure. episode. And, and we want to hear all about yes. how you applied them and where you are. Girl, I was on the struggle bus. Um, it has <laughs> been, you know, over the last year or so, really trying to build a team and come into the space of being a manager. Um, there, I'm reading a book that talks a lot about a, the three different aspects of being an entrepreneur. You know, there's the entrepreneur, there's the technician, and then there's the manager. And going from a space of being um, a solopreneur and doing so many of those things by myself for so long, when I started to build my team and bring in on people, I was struggling with being a friend <laughs> versus being um, a manager and really helping to set some clear expectations. And you got me in, li in line and in order <laughs> and all the way together um, and helped me to really come up with some strategies to um, be that compassionate leader that's really so important to me, but also show up as a manager and hold my staff accountable. Well, you know, it's really interesting because you have always marketed yourself as a relationship yes. marketer, yes. right? And so when you want these relationships, you want to understand that they're working. When they're not working, Absolutely. you want to understand why you're, you're invested in that relationship, not yes. just the fir from the first moment, but all the way through the life cycle yes. of being able to move forward from a marketing perspective. Yes. So I have to tell you a little something, a little secret. She is my marketing strategist. And let me tell you, all of my social media, all uh, even down to photo shoots, getting photo shoots scheduled, um, actually thinking about how we want to name things, content we go through, what strategies are applicable. And she's awesome at it. Right. So I can't say enough about watching her grow and what this has really meant as she as I have seen her over the last year move forward. So I have to tell you, congratulations Thank on you. doing that. Thank you so much. Um, but how big is your team now? Oh, I'm hiring a new VA now. So we are up to five people. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, um, God is amazing. And um, I'm really marketing my gifts and helping people to do the same. And I think that's one of the really key strategies I took away from you last time is making sure that I'm having people work in their expertise. That's a huge part of it. When people don't show up and perform the way they need to, are we stretching them too far? Are we asking for them things that aren't in their natural skill set that is making it hard for them to show up? Right. So how did you find out what that natural asking, skill set was? Asking, asking. So I'm a relationship girl, as you mentioned. And, you know, sometimes I don't want to say it's ever to my detriment, but that has been a challenge with my employees is making sure that I'm focused on the relationship, but I'm also focused on the end goal in the business. Right. So asking the questions, what do you enjoy? Are you enjoying this work? 
you know, obviously you can't only do things that you enjoy, but I want to make the bulk of your tasks things that you're gifted to do, right? We have natural giftings and talents. So how do I, as a leader, make sure that I have people that are working in those veins? It makes it less, you know, arduous to get things done. So when you started talking to your employees um, after the last episode, and we were talking about um, really leveraging 80% of their talents, you know, right. maybe 20% they don't do. Right. Were they honest? Did you find people they were. Corner? I think they were. I think they're really honest about, yeah, I want to do that. You know, <laughs> and that relationship in trying to create an environment of um, servant leadership and compassionate leadership had a, a created space for them to be honest. Mm -hmm. So you started rearranging responsibilities based upon exactly, their competencies exactly. and what they were doing. How'd you feel? Was it easy? Not always. It's and you know, holding people accountable is not always easy. Holding yourself <laughs> accountable is that never easy, right? Right. So um, no, it hasn't always been easy. But you know, we have the difficult conversations, and they know that at the end of the day, I'm concerned about them as people, and not just how they perform for me. Like they're not puppets trying to perform. I care how your children are doing. I know that this was a rough week because baby had a doctor's appointment that wasn't favorable or whatever the case may be. So how do I support you, right, as your leader, but making sure still that the business is getting taken care of? So how do you manage that time with your clients in terms of deliverables when people aren't delivering what needs to be done or there's challenges that are there or they're having a rough week because you are a small company, yeah. how are you leveraging those? Well, you know what? I have a lot less of that now, a lot less of very, very rarely is there a deliverable that is not on time. And that's because I put in buffers into our schedule, right? I tell my team, I'm telling you my secret. I tell my <laughs> team something's due, you know, a week maybe before it's actually due so that I have time to go back in and check or, you know, my, um, my business manager has time to go back and look over things before it, the end result is due to a client. So the client never fills that buffer. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and being clear with the expectations with my clients too, like don't ask me for something today and expect it today, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, so making sure that there's clear, healthy expectations all around. Well, we're gonna take a station break and when we come back, we wanna talk more about healthy expectations because I think that's really important um, with where she's going with her business. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, with Vicki Wright Hamilton, focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Welcome back. So let's first talk about those expectations. How do you set expectations with your clients? And when emergencies come up or it's like, oh, I need this, I need that, I need this. Right. How do you deal with that? Right. So uh, my clients too know, you know, that I have your best interest at heart, right? Mm. And that anything that I can do for you, I'm going to do, right? But some things aren't, I just can't. And it's very rare that I can't. But um, just, you know, being honest and open communication and caring about people. When I find that when you care about people and people know that you really care about them, no matter who you're dealing with, it just opens the door. People are more receptive to when you do have a challenge, if you do have to go early or if you do have to, whatever the case may be, being open and honest and having integrity and letting people know that you care about them, it just takes you so far in every aspect of relationships. So how do you take time off for you? How do you, are you able to take vacations? Are you able to take time off and know that the business is still running forward? You know what I did this summer? She knows that I took vacation. I was off for a week for the first time in ever. I was gone and I didn't really touch anything, nobody called me, there was no emergencies, because my business can function without me. So, which in, to me means I finally have a business and I'm not working a job, <laughs> right? So, and I have the right people in place. 
things were done ahead of time. I knew I was leaving. So I booked my calendar up, make sure things were talk to all my clients before I leave. I'm not going to be here. Don't call me. Don't <laughs> ask me. <laughs> right. It lovingly. Right. And they want that for me. You want me to go on vacation? I sure do, because I want, want you to come back really rejuvenated. Exactly. You want so me to stay married. married. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I want you to stay happy. Exactly. Because if you're not happy. happy, that means my stuff doesn't get done. Exactly. And, you know, I don't want to go through all that. So, yes, I want you to stay but, happy. And, that, and that's the case with all the people we work with, right? We want people that are happy, that are fully functioning. So, yeah, I was able to take vacation. Didn't worry about it when I was gone. Every, everything was posted. Everybody was taken care of. And it moved like clockwork. Well, see, you can like have a team yes. where things get done. And you yes. can, and I can trust. make these happen. And, and I you can, can trust. trust. So let's talk about trust. Whew. How did you build that trust from before on our last conversation? We're talking about not being able to hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. You then went and had conversations about what they're good at. Right. How did you build that trust once they said, well, I enjoy doing this? Okay. What steps did you go through to make sure that because they enjoyed it, that you were actually going to get the quality? Right. So two things. Um, first, trust in myself. And, you know, a fish stink from the head down. So if there's something that wasn't functioning and, I, you know, we've had some people turn over and, you know, some relationships have ended and I've brought in new staff. But realizing what I wasn't showing up for, how I wasn't showing up as a leader, looking at myself and doing a whole lot of introspection, like, am I a trustworthy leader? Am I putting too much on people and then wondering why they can't perform? Right. Am I expecting too much? So that's the first thing. And then slowly um, setting the expectation. This is what I need. Are you able to do it? And if you're not, tell me you're not. And we can, you know, talk about some other strategies, some other ways to get around things. If you say to Shauna, I can take this, I can't take that. I can either say, um, okay, that works for me. Oh, no, it doesn't. I need to find somebody else for this role. Right? But having that transparent conversation allows us to see how we move forward. So you said something that was very important. You said you did a lot of introspection. Oh, absolutely. So how did you go about the introspection? How did it make you feel that you had to stop and take the time to do introspection in the first place right. in order to move forward? Well, for me, um, doing self-work and professional development for the last two, three years especially, has been paramount in my success. You know, I nearly doubled my revenue last year on track to do the same this year. And it's really because I'm looking in the mirror. And what is it about Tashana that is not yielding the results that I want to yield, right? And we all have something, some flaw, something in us that we need to correct, kind of course correct, if you will, to get us the desired result, giving ourselves a command and being able to follow through on it, right? So I think that's something I've been doing for years now and um, looking in the mirror and saying, okay, is there something that's showing up in your team that's in you? And it's something I spoke back to doing things I don't want to do. There's certain things in my business that at this level, I do not want to do anymore. And when I try to do those things, I'm finding that I'm, I'm slow, I'm late, because um, I don't want to do it. It's a force, right? Um, and that's why I had the conversation with my team. Are there things that you're really finding it hard to do? And usually that means it's something you don't like to do. Mm -hmm. Right? It's that procrastination factor. It's that's the factor. procrastination factor. But the things that you love to do, guess what you do? You do all that stuff first, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the things that you don't like to do, you kind of have it sitting on your task list for forever. Right. <laughs> right. right. Until the night before Until and it's the due night. and then the quality exactly. isn't there because you put it off and procrastinate exactly. as long as you could mm -hmm. because it was something that you really were not passionate about doing Absolutely. and wanting to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I am, you know, one of those kind of people that I work really good under pressure. So it's a balance between that. And sometimes I create pressure so that I perform. 
Wow. I've, I've been like that since I was in college. But you know, that's good to know about yourself, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I know. So about I'm going to create this pressure mm -hmm. because if I create this pressure, I'm going to deliver better quality. Absolutely. Right. And that quality can come across, even though it took me to the ninth hour. I mm -hmm. love doing it, but that pressure helps me. And right. it's good to know that about Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. And you know, I think what's really important that you said is it's good to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? And, and be willing to say, this just is not working for me, mm -hmm. you know, or I can't do this. Or I don't feel comfortable doing this anymore, right? right? And that this is what I want somebody else that loves to do this, because that's not me. I'll tell you, I, I was a, I could be an assistant to anybody, right? Been doing it. I did it when I was going through college and, and making money to put myself through school. But at this point in time in my life, mm -hmm. I am not interested in doing schedules and appointments and and this and that and doing PowerPoints, even though I know how to do yeah. them. I'm just not interested in doing that. Absolutely. And so it's like, oh, my gosh, I got to create this presentation. What am I going to do? I just want to give you the content. You go create it. I don't want to <laughs> have to do that anymore. I want somebody else to be able to do that. And I think that honesty allows you to understand what you should outsource and what you shouldn't and what that should look like, mm -hmm. you know, as you continue to move forward. So I appreciate, you know, that introspection. I appreciate the fact that you're honest and being honest with the audience to say, you know what, everything you set out to do may not be everything you want to do. Absolutely. And we have to pivot and, and revamp as necessary. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a station break. When we come back, we're going to see if we have a question from our audience. We'll be right back. Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, with Vicki Wright Hamilton, focuses on helping entrepreneurs to overcome their business challenges to help increase their bottom line. Each episode provides strategies for growth and transformation. Watch Vicki share her 20 plus years of experience as a corporate executive to help entrepreneurs level up. Welcome back. So, Tashana, talk to us about, you know, you said introspection. Mm -hmm. How does mindset play a role in all of this? And how do you get yourself ready? Oh, I think mindset is everything. And really um, expanding the vision of what you believe is possible for yourself. Right? That's something that I coach my clients through. And really, anymore, it's something that I coach so much alongside doing marketing services. Because a lot of times it's not the marketing that's the thing, it's right here that's the thing that's kept keeping most people, especially most women, from getting to the next level. So it, it's everything, you know, telling yourself, I can meet this goal. And setting loftier goals, right? You know, if it's, if it's too easy and you feel like you can do it, oh, that's not a, that's not a good one. <laughs> Get you one that you don't know, I don't know how Jesus, we yep. go get this right, <laughs> right? Um, that's the one that you want to really go after. So, and also setting goal statements like, what do I want my life to really look like? Business is beautiful, but what do I want? What kind of life am I trying to create, right? So, um, yeah, those are really important things to me, and have been really key in setting my mind, listening to the right books, you know, eating up every piece of information, telling myself the right things, affirmations. I do them with my baby girl every morning, right? I'm doing them with my four-year-old already, starting her on the path of telling herself the goodness that she sees in herself, so. You know, it's interesting you say that because affirmations are so important. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was telling someone a goal I had and their response to me was, are you manifesting that or has it already happened? I said, I'm manifesting, a I'm manifesting it, but it's gonna happen. It is not a matter of if, it's going to happen. So, you know, putting that feeling out there and that positive energy out there to really believe, not just say it, but believe it. Right. right. And not and take it one step further from believing and acting as if it's already happened. So I live my life as if I'm already doing the things that and creating the income <laughs> that I want to create, you know, within reason. Right. If I want something that is, you know, if I still pay the mortgage, <laughs> I get it because you have to put yourself in the feeling of having the thing you want. Right. Because it can't be over there somewhere. It has to be deeply rooted and you have to be sitting in that thing. Right. And wiggling it <laughs> mm -hmm. and believing that it's possible for your life. 
and feeling as if it's already there. But how do you keep from feeling guilty? It's like, okay, I want to one day, you know, be X and I want to make this kind of money and I'm going to operate as if I'm there, not quite, but almost there yeah. within reason. But I feel guilty because I've spent more money. I've done more things. How do you keep yourself from feeling that guilt? I think for me, you know, I went this summer and we rented a beach house. It was one of the things that my future self was going to do. And we did it. It was expensive, but we did it. And trusting God enough in the universe in yourself that more money will come. That's not the last piece of money I'm ever going to see, right? That has been <laughs> at the, you know, it's it, just trusting that and really knowing it. It has to be a knowing, an inner knowing. And when you get there, you just know. I hear you. I hear you. And I say that I also agree with that because I have manifested some things out there and I know it shall be and already done and mm -hmm. the victory is won. Amen. Right? Amen. And we just have to keep that positive energy around us as we move forward. Let's see if we have a question from the audience. Hi, Tashana. Hi. Um, my question for you is, I'm also looking to hire a team. So I was wondering, how did, what was like the factor when you decided that you needed a team and then how did you figure out like how many people you needed? Right, right. Great question. So um, I know I needed a team where there was competencies in my business that I could offer, but it was going to take me forever and I didn't want to be the one to do those things. Um, so first really identifying what are my strong suits? What do I love? What, you know, what would I do for free? Right. And then kind of working from there. And I have this all these other services. What are the easiest things to kind of hand off? And a lot of times those are administrative things. Those are things that, you know, someone's hired you as a VA to do anyway. Can you hire another VA to do some of those things? Right. So it's really about determining what you love first and what kind of stuff do you want to keep and what can you give away and doing it incrementally and hiring before you're ready. By the time you make enough money to really feel like that you can support having team members, like you keep moving the goalposts. Well, I need to make a uh, 10 more thousand or 20 more, th like just do it. And it may be small at first, but starting somewhere and growing from there. You know, I can, I'm hiring another person before I'm fully ready because I know that this, I'm going into my really bu busy season and if I can see my team kind of starting to get a little taxed, oh, I need to do something about it, right? It's like doing something before there's a catastrophe, before deliverables are late, before there's a challenge. Um, being proactive in your approach is really key. Thank you so much for your question. And I will tell you that, you know, as we talk about doing it before you're ready, you know, it's um, and having that strong faith that, yes, it's going to come. You know, you, you get this fear of I don't be responsible for anybody else's household or mm -hmm. their payroll or mm -hmm. anything like that. But it's the balance of, well, how can I manage this right. if I bring them on and, you know, waiting a period of time, if that happens, what are my contingency plans? How am I going to be able to manage in the interim? Um, I know as, you know, as I was building my team and looking for that, you know, my husband wanted me to have a team when I started my business 10 years ago. And I was like, mm -mm, I don't be responsible for anybody else's household. I don't be responsible for anybody's salary. I don't want anybody working for me. I stay a sole entrepreneur. I'm not interested. But, you know, as time went on and he was like, look at what you're doing. There's so much growth, opportunity mm -hmm. and potential. So one day, I had, the door was open. I was with a client. The door was open to take advantage of it. I said, okay, I'm going to try. If I don't get it, no harm, no foul, but I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I got it, and I'm going, uh, 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 what am I supposed to do now, right? But building that team was all about making sure they had the same brand, the same awareness, their quality was the same because they're representing you, Absolutely. right? As you're, as you're going forward and moving forward. But I agree with the fact of being prepared because as soon as I started with this RFP, the request for proposal that was asked for, I started looking for people. I started saying, okay, who do I want on my team? Who do I want to be part of my organization that's going to represent me? And having those conference calls and having those interviews and those things so that you can move forward because it takes time. It does. You know? It does. Um, and I love the fact that you took the time to say, 
what do I want to do versus what I don't want to do, but are important services for my company. Absolutely. Absolutely. Important services for my company. So I might need to offer five things. I only really want to do three of them myself. So I need to have somebody else come in and do the other two because I don't like to do them, but I need that to be part of my business. Absolutely. It's absolutely true. Like, you don't have to do everything. And I think that we, as women, <laughs> especially women of color and black women, we have this thing that we have to be the one touching and doing and manipulating everything. And you don't. It's not the way to happiness. It's not the way to wealth. <laughs> <laughs> That's right? the key. Right? Wealth. Did you hear that? Wealth. That is the key. That is the key. Well, will you join me in thanking uh, t Dr. T Tashana Thompson for being with us today? You know, I want to thank all of you for taking the time out to watch this episode. And I hope you got a lot out of it and you can see that growth can happen. Thank you so much for joining us on Strategic Minds, Making Money Moves, where we give strategies in order to get that green. See you next time. <laughs>